Now, one of our podcast guests, Mac, believes that the designers of Kubernetes didn't set out to build an overcomplicated piece of software. Rather, it grew organically with hard-won knowledge baked into the code base. How do you view the complexity versus capability trade-off in Kubernetes? You know, it, it'll be no surprise to say that I think Kubernetes at this point is fairly ubiquitous and, and you know, the cloud native uh, ecosystem is, is more or less adopted everywhere. But still, Kubernetes is kind of still a building block group. I, I don't see Kubernetes um, as, you know, the 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 only thing that the developer needs, there are multiple layers in that, in that stack. And so what we kind of see is that Kubernetes more and more is now being built into internal developer platforms and internal platforms that provide additional um, abstractions and, and, and built in layers to, to, to manage the Kubernetes environment, you know, and you start off with how you manage Kubernetes deployments and uh, the general operations of Kubernetes, but then you often think about how you layer on things like um, certificate management and ingress and say user management and access controls and secrets management, for example. And of course, you know, at the end of the day, it is all about the developers and it's all about making the applications real. So, you know, you also need that additional layer to include the development and application workflow, like CICD and the availability of repos and container registries and that sort of thing. And then, of course, once the applications have been deployed and they're running on your platform, uh, you need to look at, you know, the operational aspects, like how do you do observability, how do you do scaling, and how do you do failover? And so I kind of see Kubernetes as like the kernel. Mm -hmm.